Welcome everyone to today me talking about my meat slabs. My meat slabs were my latest Necromunda Goliath gang. Uh, I've retired them for now but they might see uh, a return at some stage especially if I get an absolute pasting in our new and latest campaign uh, that we're having locally in the southwest of England. Uh, if you guys know the Weybridge or Bobman area that's roughly where we're based to and if you ever want to get involved uh, please send me a message and uh, see what we can do. We currently have about nine players that have been guaranteed to uh, be in our campaign but if you're interested in any future campaigns please please give us a shout. So the meat slabs. The meat slabs are my first Goliath gang that I've fully play through all the way through one campaign and finished. What I mean by that is, the first time I played Goliath, it was um, a local event, just for a weekend, just a bit of a mess about, no real fixed structure per se, and no real fixed number of games. The first proper campaign they were involved in, uh, they changed rules, which is about right. Um, so, um, 2017, the new Necromunda came round, uh, locally we slowly picked up bits and pieces but we didn't really start a new campaign until last year when they changed the rules halfway through our campaign how very dare they uh, so we ended the campaign there and I was doing pretty well then I think I was probably top dog but this time around I have fully completed one campaign with my Goliath so it got a little bit out of hand um, at the end of the campaign I had a little bit of credits left over didn't spend them all, but my end of campaign gang rating was 6,160. So Marcus, our, our games master, he didn't actually put a cap on how many models you can have. Because um, it's, I believe, an optional rule. Well, that's what he said anyway. I wasn't going to argue with that. I said, are you doubly sure? Because it did get quite out of hand. And I will show you. So here over on lovely Yak Tribe, you can see the meat slabs. So the meat slabs, as I scroll down, like I said, 6,160 gang rating. Um, yeah, I had 280 credits left over. I didn't spend in the end. Reputation was 19 by the end. My maximum has been... is either 22 or 23 at one stage of the campaign. I didn't actually lose any reputation until near the end of the campaign. And Kevin, one of our local Dalak players, um, <laughs> reveled in stealing my rep and thought it was pretty funny. And I did switch to Outlaw majority of the way for the campaign purely because I really was an outlaw everybody was going for me it got a little bit out of hand um, so we were playing the fact that you can be challenged once a week as long as it's not by the same person and we normally had about a fortnight window so you could probably get two games fairly comfortably in a fortnight uh, especially we all have full-time jobs, and real life does get in the way. But I was getting challenged probably three times a week. They really, really wanted to take me down, but it just made me stronger. So, I got all of the achievements for this campaign. So the achievements were for the, the most wealth, uh, <laughs> the highest total number of models, and as you can see here, I had 33. Um the most kills, the fewest deaths, um, and the most territories, which I've got all of. So as you can see, I had six bruisers, one forge tyrant, seven forge bosses, one bruiser specialist, a rogue dock, two rogue thugs, which to be fair, we didn't actually use. So uh, Marcus, said we can have 400 credits to begin with for the Ash Wastes if we want to. 
So I had two thugs and two vehicles, which we'll get to in a bit, and I never used them once. This time around, maybe different, maybe different. I had a stimmer who on paper looked like an absolute boss, but most of the time people either ran away from or he just didn't make it into a fight. Uh, just two shorter legs, really. Uh, seven bullies, two Forgeborn, one chem dealer and a partridge in a pear tree. Uh, bruiser specialist, a carotid, that's right, you heard me, I had a carotid. And a brute handler with ambot. Uh, love the old brute handler, gave my ambot loads of XP, or it would have done. So my ambot was actually um, pretty souped up, had better ballistics, I had uh, better speed, purely because it was jumping in games, it didn't get to kill anybody because everybody just left it alone, but the, the brute handler was whipping it, I was getting loads of XP. The only game it saw any combat was against Ian, the Handy Badger, against his Vansar. In the first opening turn, he double moved a model with a cheeky little ability and shot it with a melter gun in the back, 66 in the ambot. So I had to have a new ambot, and we'll start at the very top. So here, no particular order, we have Frost, a bruiser who made it all the way through the campaign. Uh, Frost, ironically, has a two on the cool. Now, normally, you would only get down to three on the cool, but something actually happened that made him have even better cool. So this guy, unless he's rolling double ones, in fact, I think that still would even work, because it's technically a two up. I think double ones are always a fail. Please tell me otherwise. And please tell me if I've messed up any rules here. And the reason I, I won was purely because I'm a cheeky git, but I don't think I did. Um, I'm still very new to it, so please point out if I've done anything wrong. Uh, so Frost had a bolt gun, and he basically had a blaze grenade uh, as a freebie through one of the territories. Um, so he didn't get many upgrades other than cool. I was really hoping for ballistics. Uh, but as you can see already, Frost, Ripley... The theme of my gang originally was uh, Marines from the film Aliens. But that got out of hand because I had so many models, I ended up spreading out into the Predator universe. But we'll see as we go. So basically, bolt gun on, an, on a regular bruiser. Ripley was my tyrant. Um, the combi plasma pistol, as you get when you first start. And I did actually have a chain axe originally ended up with a gore drinker axe, but never actually used it. So, I didn't get masses amounts of kills. We'll go into kills later on, some bragging rights. But, most of my go-tos were Nerves of Steel, especially for my um, close combat people, because I didn't want them to get knocked down and not be able to charge, especially with, it, most of the time, a Speed 4 model. Or the guys with the heavy weapons don't really want to get knocked down, so nerves are still. So nerves are still most of my guys. But I did end up with True Grit and Fearsome on my leader, which is pretty cool. Uh, I have Hudson, which had the renderizing axe, and once again, one of the blaze grenades. Did pretty well, did pretty well. Ended up with movement six, uh, weapon skill of two. Once again, nerves are still, True Grit. I did have a little bit of armour on anybody that I really cared about. So most of the time, armoured undersuit with the furnace plates, ablative overlay. It's pretty nice. Um, so getting some pretty good saves. Obviously, the saves will degrade over a period of time uh, with the ablative overlay. Uh, next we have Gorman. Just had a good old-fashioned shotgun. Didn't really get much on the upgrades, apart from, you notice, Toughness 6. So all of my gang, I put my bruisers and my heavy hitters, were all Toughness 5. I got ended up getting a Toughness 6 at this one, it was just a random uh, up, uh, upgrade increase. Um, but I did put all my, my squishy ones, my little bullies and my freebies, I did try to keep them at Toughness 4, because... Of, 
the Mavics. So it's the only thing I really brought them out of that with was increased toughness. Um, apparently that's broken as hell. But going against Vansar, when they've got a Ballistics of 2, and you're most of the time Ballistics of 4, you're very, very slow. I did find most of the time, my main weakness, doors. Yep, that's right, I couldn't get through doors. So I was slow, wasn't accurate, couldn't get through doors. I was getting messed around quite a bit by some Delac Psychers, just throwing me off terrain, left, right and centre. Um... But toughness was the only thing basically keeping me in this game. And as you probably know, if you've got a toughness 6 and you're trying to wound somebody with a strength 3 weapon, you need those 6s. So most of the time, the toughness 6 stuff is pretty damn good. Of course, motor guns will change that, but yeah. So very, very lucky to get a toughness 6 in that one. It wasn't intentional, it just happened. Drake uh, had... A grenade launcher, this guy didn't do anything really throughout the whole campaign. Yes, it hit stuff all the, all the time, but hardly ever killed anything. So basically, it was just knocking people over, stopping them from running around. Uh, didn't use smoke very often, but just in case, if I need to stop those charge lanes, smoke's pretty good. Um, but I will talk about territories in a bit. Some of my guys got pretty nasty with some territory bonuses. So Hicks, uh, shotgun, toughness five again, didn't really get any upgrades, so still ballistics four. Like I said, most of my stuff is ballistics four. I did buy a dock from the get-go, and the dock really, really did save me. I did have a few models that were 60 something, and the dock managed to bring them back. Here are my two maulers, which I never used at all in the campaign. So twin link bolters, I don't know if they would be any good or not. Please give me your opinions, because I still haven't used them yet. Um, and I did pick T-Bone for both of them with the old Power Ram. I thought that would be pretty cool. But like I said, never used them. Apone, keeping with the good old-fashioned uh, Alien Marines names, the pair of pulverizers. Took a long time for this guy to do absolutely anything, uh, but on paper, paired pulverizers Wicked. On a charge, um, you're getting six attacks, basic, and then you're getting an additional one for a charge, um, and then you're getting another one because it, you know, paired weapons also give you a plus one. So you get eight attacks on the charge was pretty damn tasty. Um, but he wasn't killing a lot. He really wasn't. So it took a long time for him to get some decent speed. So in the end, he ended up with speed seven. So at least he could get in there which is pretty tasty. Uh, Bishop um, was a bully. Uh, toughness 4, like I said. Most of my uh, bullies, I kept Toughness 4, because just thematic purposes. I could have made them weaker in the VAT to get more credits, but at that stage, I really didn't need many more credits. Especially when I had three settlements. So really spamming a lot of bullies into my list. The only issue with 33 models is the fact that those XPs are being scattered throughout your whole list. It'd be nice if you had 10 models, really raking in those XP, really buffing up those characters. But first world problems, am I right? Next, we go with Vasquez. My favourite model should have been killed because she has a reckless weapon. Her gun should have blown up. Uh, but movement 7 was pretty nice. Her ballistics, when she got real close, uh, was essentially ballistics 2, within range 8. Uh, but she did end up having some spine injuries, taking her down to strength of 2, which didn't really matter with that gun. So I briefly mentioned some territories. One of the territories I did get, I think the very first game, was Archaeotech. Played against a Vansire player, he really wanted the Archaeotech. I ended up winning it and I picked Blaze. So I put Blaze on this weapon because it's already unstable. So she could potentially kill herself. So you can't get more unstable, right? So it's pretty nice. So she had a fire shock. Um, I used to call it the Ghostbuster gun, the Storm Welder. And I made the appropriate noises when I fired it. 
Uh, Reckless, thankfully, didn't kill my own guys too much. I uh, did injure a couple of them. Um, but my my, my frag grenade um, was also Blaze, so my grenade launcher. So that was pretty tasty. So hitting people on fire, um, hitting people, catching them on fire. But I didn't really end up killing anybody. Not like that with them. The ones that did kill people were Vasquez and Burke. Burke with the heavy bolter was amazing. Yes, I may have only shot him once per game, some games, because he seemed to run out of ammo all the time. But this guy was an absolute weapon. Love the heavy bolter. Ballistics too. Uh, even hitting on twos if they're behind cover at short distance was really, really nice. Took a long time to get there, of course. Um, but 425 credits. Did he really make his money throughout the campaign? I'm not sure. Did did kill a load of Cordor nobodies. Um, but it takes a lot of them to chew through to make up 425 points. Um, so True Grit, Nerves of Steel. Suspenser did make it quite expensive, but Suspenser is really worth it on the heavy weapons. And my latest gang, I am struggling with heavy weapons uh, on my Chaos Helots because they're so squishy. You know, you put all that stock into one model and they do get killed. But once again, Toughness 6 on Burke, that was a happy accident. Um... That's pretty cool. I do like that. Uh, I got a chem dealer, which was uh, just for a bit of fun. Um, putting spur on my close combat guys, making them a bit faster. Of course, he's got fixer, which is really nice. So you do get some credits back. But then you've got to pay your chem dealer at the end of the game as well. So most of the time, he paid for himself. He never made much money. But hey, it's just a nice model as well. Mac is another bruiser with a bolt gun. This time around, he actually had slightly better ballistics, which is really, really, really nice. Uh, he also had a mono sight, which really helped with the shooting. Um, although, I didn't think he managed to kill a great deal of stuff. It's always nice to have a bolt gun. I really do miss the bolt guns. I know there are six up ammo, and we do have in our latest campaign, the, um, the enforcers, the paladines who have way better ammo for the bolt gun, so we'll have to watch out for that. Anything with two damage is pretty tasty, especially with strength four. Uh, this is the Balefire Thrower. This is such a cool weapon. I didn't hit as many people as I wanted to with this thing because people just ignored it and stayed out of the way. But a cheaper flamer and it has cursed. What's there not to like? Yes, you've got to be an outlaw, but I'm fine with that. I really want to pick one up in our latest campaign, but going against two Gene Stealer Colts that mostly are immune to Blaze, hmm, I'm not so sure. Still auto hits, and still toughness 4 on the regular flamer, but cast, that's pretty tasty. Making people insane, what's there not to like? Newt, another expensive model. I actually bought the additional toughness with this one, trying to keep them alive. Uh, a multi melter, yes, it's expensive with a, a suspenser, but if and when I missed, at least I put a little template and there's still a good chance it's going to hit something, which is nice. But one of my favorite weapons um, is Yutani with the Firestorm shotgun. Um, I, I, I loved it. I loved it. I didn't get any upgrades at all because most people ran away from essentially a strength 5 shotgun with blaze. Uh, it's, it's, it's a heavy flamer. It is a heavy flamer. It's such a cool model. Um, but yeah, most people ignored it. And this is another fun weapon for me. So, the Zen Arc Death Arc is a fantastic weapon. The reason I picked it is because it's a versatile weapon with range 5. When you're at speed 4 to start with and you can't get into combat, why not? But once again, you've got to be an outlaw. So I ended up with movement 6 with this one with a range of 5. 
So the minimum charge you're going to get is a 7 inch charge and then a range 5 on the top is really nice. But uh, this weapon is esoteric so you cannot improve the stats on it at all. But strength 3, damage 1, no AP doesn't sound very impressive but the fact that it's rapid fire um, is pretty nice. So I'm Pretty sure we're playing this correctly, but each hit that gets through is a rapid fire. I believe that's how it works. Um, it could be potentially quite broken because you could get um, like six attacks, for example, maybe even nine attacks on a charge. It looks really, really nasty. But you only get the plus one bonus if you're very close. So you're going to get lots of attacks through. None of which have uh, any AP. And it's only one damage and strength three. So most of the time you are wounding on fours. But you do get a bucket of dice. Which is very, very cool. Sounds very impressive. But when the Vansar had a two-up armor save. I really did struggle to try to kill those suckers. Still, 340 credits. Not, not cheap. So David was my carotid, um, who didn't run away, although did get hit quite a lot because people worked out um, blast templates, flamers, things like that is a pretty good way to go. Uh, next we have Wayland, which is my brute handler, um, which did actually kill one person in the whole of the campaign. Um, but once again, just a fantastic model. The brute handler and the chem dealer comes in the same box, and I have got a video um, about those guys on my YouTube channel. Um, I, just, I just think the Wicked models and they are actually quite useful in a campaign. So Hawkins, um, I really like this guy because a Whisper Bane knife isn't that much cheaper than a normal knife. Yes, it's still got the same bonuses as in it's still your strength, still damage one, no AP, but scatter shot. So this guy, generally speaking, is going to be running in with his pistol on a charge, and with that, he is getting three attacks. But each one is scatter shot. So scatter shot, for those who don't know, each time a wound gets, uh, each time a hit gets through, you have to roll a d6, and that's how many wound dice you need to roll for that one particular hit. So yeah, all right, may only got one hit through, but it was getting on average three wound dice, which does make a difference. But pick your targets, you know, backstab doesn't happen all the time. It's great when you're mobbing up. Um, but yeah, it's just a bit of fun. It wasn't massively expensive for a bully. Uh, I mean, the in, um, incendiary charge is in there, which I think is 50 credits. So he's actually 115 credits without that bomb, um, which I didn't think was that expensive. So it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So you're... Most of the time, you're probably going to be hitting on twos because he did actually get a bit of an upgrade. Um, but normally hitting on threes. Um, I think it's a really nice weapon. I think it's a really, really nice weapon. Just a Whisper Bane knife. And I'm pretty sure, once again, you can only have it if you're an outlaw. Outlaws get really, really cool stuff. I do know that. I do know that. Right, uh, next we have Blaine. So, Blaine... Uh, stub cannon, nothing fancy to speak of. It's just your generic bruiser, 90 credits. Why not? Uh, poncho, as you can tell, I'm um, starting to go into the Predator universe a little bit there. Uh, heavy rock salt. Never got to use this guy in combat because it was near the end of the campaign. But heavy rock salt is very expensive, 170 credits. But if it does hit anything, it's going to do some work. So, hitting on twos, um, he is um, probably going to be wounding on twos as well because it's, it's strength six. And So, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, two damage, AP three. That's pretty nice. We're rending. Could be really, really, really messy. Um, with an outski, and it's junior because the first one got killed, uh, just as a hand flamer and spudjacker. Not too expensive, but it's pretty nice to put Blaze out there just to mess up people's plans. 140 credits, 
not too expensive. Faro, once again, Whisper Bane knife. Kept this one really, really dirt cheap. So no upgrades on the weapon skills. Um, but 85 credits going there just to mess up some stuff. Not necessarily going to kill anything, but as a little speed bump, 85 credits for a Goliath is pretty cheap. Jones Jr., as you worked out, anything with Jr. in the title means um, it is um, a model that's already been killed. So long rifle with uh, the warp rounds. So it's a single shot with a warp round, which is cursed. Um, looks really nasty, but I really wanted a model that looked like a sniper. A Goliath sniper model looks a bit odd sometimes, so I made a really nice conversion. And I thought with a grapple launcher, so you can get up high, mono sight, false hood, so you can't be hit the first hand too. I thought it was really, really cool. Probably not going to do much work, because end of the campaign again, I think he got one or two kills under his belt. But I just really wanted to convert a model for it. Uh, next we have Mother 2, because obviously the first one got killed with... Uh, a multi melted to the back like a real man. Um, a little bit of an upgrade. Um, slightly faster, slightly easier to hit. But an Ambot is just a wicked model. Really do like an Ambot. Dallas, in my first campaign, I had a Goliath with a missile launcher which tried to do a stealth mission and it was not stealthy. It's not a stealthy weapon. You cannot put a silencer on a missile launcher. But for 300 credits, this guy does some work. And you can put a 5 inch pie plate down. That's really going to mess up some people's plans. Just knocking people over, really. Not necessarily killing, but did get a couple of kills under his belt. And then we've got Lambert, which is Spud Jacker and Stub Gun. Really, 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 really cheap. Just one of the couple of cheap bodies. 60 credits, nice. Kane, heavy stubber. Just once again, for conversion purposes. I don't think the heavy stubber is worth it over heavy bolter. There's not much uh, in it for points. And I think the plus one to hit is better than negative one. Yeah, it's just conversion purposes, basically. Uh, yeah, I just think they look cool. They look real, real mean, don't they? Long barrel, big old gun. Um, and then we've got keys um, from Predator, the sequel. Uh, fighting knife and bolt pistol, just because bolt pistols look cool and just want a bit of variety. Uh, Harrigan, he's starting to recognise the names now, I bet. He had a fighting knife and a plasma pistol, an actual plasma pistol uh, from the black market, not um, not the combi plasma. Oh yeah, also just to say, the sniper rifle on Jones Jr., uh, was actually pilfered from a corridor, I believe. So, that was the list. A lot of models to get through. Jones, Mother, and Wibonowski were killed. I believe, actually, Jones wasn't killed. Jones was captured, but my friend Dan couldn't make the rest of the campaign. So we just said, because I was doing well in the campaign and I didn't want to be that guy, that he was just killed. So, it is a shame. But I only lost three models, so I didn't too much stick for only losing three models much. Uh, a lot of the other gangs had lost some serious number of models. So I really can't, can't complain. So these guys are fantastic. Um, and when it comes to the territories, like I said, I ended up having nine territories, I believe, in the end. So I had three settlements. Um... I had the Promethean Cache, I had um, Architect Vault, the Needleways, uh, <laughs> loads of stuff in the end. Uh, so it got a little bit one-sided, but in our new campaign, there's two gangs from the previous campaign, which I think are definitely up there at the top at the moment because we haven't played any games yet. But that's Marcus's Escher, so they've they played a few games. 
Um, in the last campaign, because it was a, a new gang halfway through the campaign, because he had a bit of bad luck. And Kevin, who had a scary to lack, and I have to say, the Promethean Spectre, or whatever it's called, we call it the Disco Squid, uh, it's just massively underpointed for what it can do. So I haven't got the, the tech to deal with it straight out the gate. So hopefully somebody will clip that thing's wings. But we just could not take it out. With three wounds, toughness five, um, stupid amounts of attacks and really fast. Um, we didn't know how to deal with it. And the fact that it's got nerves of steel now and it's fearless or... The one when you have to roll a wheel check to see if you can charge it, it's quite hard to take that thing out. It's been hit with a melter, it's been hit with bolt guns, and it just keeps getting back and keeps getting stronger and stronger. So yeah, that's my bragging over and done with about my meat slabs. I haven't finished painting them. I'm currently going to be playing in this new campaign. Uh, Chaos Helic Coats that are mutated, so I'm using the mut mutant rules with them as well. Basically because I like to convert and make some weird and wonderful models, which I'll show you in the future. Um, but I will go back to Goliath at some stage, and I'll definitely will use them in a future campaign, even if it's not the meat slabs. So, if I brought these guys back into our new campaign, I definitely be dishing out underdog to everybody I played against. Most of my stuff is really expensive, and the overall gang rating over six thousand it is absolute crazy. So I really want to hear your Necromunda stories. Were you the top dog in your campaign, or do you know a guy that was top dog, and he's got some serious um, stories about someone whose gang got massively out of hand? Too many models, really, really powerful, some really broken rules. Not that I want to make my gang really broken, but I just would like to hear those war stories. What cool stuff has happened? For example, listening to um, Gildas Ford Radio recently, one of my favourite podcasts, and I own one of their merch t-shirts now. Never go full, Colin. They did mention the fact that you can use... Uh, thresher needle worms with your Orlok's lucky trait to instantly get a six with your needle worms and roll for all enemies on the table. They all need to roll one injury dice. That is too too powerful. So if you've got some wicked stories out there, someone's gang was massively powerful, someone's worked out some cheeky shenanigans and it needs to be banned. Um, as a um, new gang start out, I made some really nice cards, uh, sorry, picked some nice tactics cards, and one of them already we had nerfed, because it basically means one model in your opponent's gang cannot make it to the table. Now we've nerfed it, so it's not a leader or a champion, because I believe that is just too powerful. But if you've got any really powerful stories out there, we really, really want to hear about it. So leave a description in the comment section below, or contact us on our Facebook page, which is House of Chaos Community. Hopefully enjoy my waffle, hopefully like the look of my gang, and also, by all means, share your um, gang pictures with us as well, because I really want to see your gang pictures or Necromunda terrain pictures as well. Stay safe, you wonderful people.